Hello friendos, welcome back to another video. Uh, let's just address the elephant in the room real quick. You might be wondering, hello. You might be wondering why it looks like um, I got punched in the face. And the reason for that is I got punched in the face. Honestly, it was uncalled for and she's a giant bitch and I don't know if we're friends anymore, to be quite honest. What do you think? Why'd you do that? <laughs> nah, I'm kidding. I can't be mad at you. We know this. It was my fault. I asked her if she wanted to go O-U-T and um, I was just a little close to her face when I asked that and she kind of <laughs> lost her goddamn mind and yeah, so today we are talking cardio. I'm I'm exhausted just thinking about cardio. This is a video I've been thinking about making for a while, just never really pulled the trigger on it because I didn't know how I wanted to format it. And I think this is a video that's gonna go over the span of a few days because I kind of want to talk about a couple different forms of cardio and I'm definitely not doing them all today. So I think I'll just pull my camera out and film throughout the week as I come up with more examples for what I'm talking about. For context, I have been on my feet a lot so far this week. It is currently thir Thursday, Thursday. It's been a busy week and uh, my feet are sore. Specifically, my ankles are sore. And as someone who has club foot and has to deal with foot issues and whose ankles are not in alignment in the way that most people's ankles are, I really do have to worry about consistent repetitive impact on them, you know, the cartilage rubbing together. I, can you hear that? Yeah, that's my ankle. We don't want to exacerbate that issue, but I still have to get my cardio in. I still have to incorporate some movement into my day because I cannot sit here on my laptop all day. A, I'll go insane. B, it's not good for me. And C, I'll go insane. So while I do have a particularly emotional investment in partaking in cardio that doesn't exacerbate my issues, it's also really important for general joint health, especially if you're younger, you really don't want to pound them into the pavement early on and then find out that you've developed joint issues later in life. I really want to start taking particular care of my joints now my ankles like i said not the greatest and it's already made its way up to my knees and my hips just because everything starts from the ground up and if you're a little off on your ankles it's going to travel upwards running is great i do it every once in a while but it's high impact repetitive activity that can really show damage over time so i don't run every day i don't even run I would say like maybe twice a week, if that. If you are looking for cardiovascular activities that you can incorporate into your routine that aren't going to put too much stress on your joints, that are low impact, low stress, then, then this is for you. I know it, it's hard to think that something that's not super strenuous and you know high intensity is going to be effective, but it really can be. That's why there is a time and a place for lists or low intensity steady state. I prefer list activities because generally if I'm running or doing some other activity that's high impact, repetitive, high intensity, I will start to feel it in my ankles and that's the thing that I fixate on and it's mental, it throws me off. We all know that running is 99.9% .9 mental and that's a blockage that I run into. As soon as my foot starts to shoot pain up into my body, it's all I'm thinking about. So I prefer low intensity steady state. And today we're going to do that in the form of walking. And it doesn't have to be, you know, a leisurely stroll where you feel like I'm doing nothing. I do like to pay attention to my heart rate. I try to keep it up there in the 90s. That's pretty high for me, honestly. I have a hard time getting my heart rate up. My resting heart rate is like, 49 <laughs> getting my heart rate anything above 130 while i'm exercising is really hard and really strenuous for me so high 90s is a pretty brisk walk especially when i'm walking with the dog 
and she's pulling me so I kind of have to hold her back. I'm engaging my core. It's a full body activity, but I'm not slamming my joints into the pavement. There's still effort being put forth. You know, we'll do a few hills. That helps get the heart rate up, but I'm not grinding my ankles down. Usually when I run as my cardio on top of my strength activity, I do about 20 minutes or like two miles, somewhere around that range, whatever comes first. So if I wanna reach that calorie burn or I wanna reach that level of effort, then the cardio gets extended. So instead of 20 minutes of walking, it's obviously not going to be equal 20 minutes of running, but an hour of brisk walking is pretty comparable, at least for my body composition. So today that is what we are going to do. And like I said, as the week goes on, I'll be showing you different ways I get in my cardio that doesn't completely destroy my joints and just kind of helps me incorporate it into my day in, in a way that's not stressful. All right, I am not gonna wear this long sleeve out in this humidity right now. So we are going to gear up, we're gonna get the dog ready to go at O-U-T. Don't wanna learn that lesson again. And um, I'll bring you along and show you how I get my cardio done on a brisk walk. So I'm walking on the trail by our house, which is one of our frequent biking routes as well, with the pup. She's, she's really pulling me, so she's not make it easy, making it easy on me at all whatsoever. As you can tell, I got my headphones in because one of the things I love about walking as opposed to running is it gives me time to listen to my podcasts. And of course, I'm listening to my favorite murder. <sighs> Georgia and Karen would probably be pretty disappointed in me if they knew I listened to them while walking alone pretty much in the woods on a regular basis, but that's just how we do it over here. As I mentioned before, this isn't a leisurely walk, especially right now because she sees a squirrel. No, not, not your squirrel. I don't know if you could see that. My heart rate's up upwards of 100, high 90s, and like I said, for me, who has a pretty low heart rate. That's pretty good. So the key is to keep that consistent. All right, that was quite the adventure. Let's check out how we did, shall we? So what we're gonna do is go into our Garmin Connect app, which is the app that is connected to my Garmin. This is a Forerunner 235, if that matters at all. So we're gonna click on today's activity, which was other in hybrid. There's no walking setting for Garmin, so I just do other. And you'll see, let's see where I live. <laughs> but right here, this is just a depiction of the trail that I walked on. And I walked for exactly an hour and 46 seconds, which again, like I said, it's gonna walk for about an hour, which is equivalent to 20 minutes of running for me. And I walked for three miles. 3.2 miles, so I did a 5K walk, and that came out to 197 calories, which is about the burn that I get when I do two miles. Like I said, I have a pretty low heart rate, so getting it up there is a little difficult, but you will see that I had an average heart rate of 97 beats per minute, and max heart rate was 133 beats per minute. That's probably when I was really trying to truck up that initial hill, and my, Elevation gain was 174 feet, which was, again, probably that initial hill, but for the most part, it was flat. So keeping up that heart rate was just a matter of swiftly walking. So you'll see right there, I got a pretty good cardio workout in. Was it stressful on my heart? Did it really train my heart for strenuous activity? No, but it was low intensity steady state, which is a valid and important form of training. And I got to listen to my podcast and get some emails done while I did it. There you go. Welcome back, friendos. We are a couple days later and a shade or two darker, I'd like to think. I just self-tanned. What do you think? Eh, still pale. I am about to engage in another form of joint-friendly, multitasking-friendly, may I say, lazy cardio. <laughs> so I thought I would show you guys one of the things that I incorporate into my routine to just kind of keep my activity up, get a little bit of cardio in. For one, this is more like 
I've already worked out today, but it was maybe on the lighter side and I just kind of wanted to top it off with something else. You know what I mean? Which I did. I worked out today. I did a leg circuit that was like very weight centric. So I would like to do something to just raise my heart rate a little bit and get my activity levels up for the day because I've been a little sedentary, so. Anyway, this is the deal. Here's a bed full of laundry. I need to do laundry. I also would like to do a little bit of cardio. You know me. I'm gonna try to do them both at the same time. So this is what I do. And this requires some equipment. <sighs> do I have it the right way? No. There we go. Ha. This is my under desk elliptical. Working out on an elliptical and yeah. I'm swimming. Um, my brother bought this for me for Christmas, like the Christmas after I started like my first corporate job out of college and I was sitting at a desk all day, which <sighs> is not the type of person I am. He bought me this under desk elliptical so that I could fidget and cycle a little bit during the day at my desk. Didn't really use that much because honestly, I just kept banging my knees at the top of my desk because it was too low, but I brought it home and I discovered that you saw I turned it around, you have it facing one way it's designed to use while you're sitting. And if you turn it around, you can use it while you're standing. So it's just like a mini standing elliptical. And I love using this when I'm doing laundry. I'll just sit here and, or stand here and, and pedal. Um, again, being mindful that I'm not doing it completely, just lackadaisically. I do, you know, keep an eye on my, my heart rate. So I'll stand here and I'll do my pedaling while I fold the laundry and I'll keep an eye on my wrist just to make sure that my heart rate's at least a little bit elevated. I'm putting in some effort. Again, I'm not jumping up and down. I'm not pounding on my joints. Um, I'm not completely exhausting myself. And like I said with the walking, because it's not as intensive as going on a run, I do have to keep in mind that if I want to burn the same amount that I do on say a 20 minute run, then I have to do this longer. I'll usually put something up on my laptops, throw something up on the TV, and I'm triple tasking, just the way I like it. Oh, and just to add this thing, you can get them as cheap as like 45, 50 bucks. Or if you wanna get like a really tech heavy one, you can get a several hundred, a several hundred dollar one. So definitely affordable option. In true Caroline fashion, I have procrastinated doing my workout until the absolute last minute. And today we are bringing you a, another joint friendly cardio that requires me being outside. It's currently 7.15, sunset tonight is 7.50. So, I'm gonna explain this to you real quick because I gotta get going. I'm gonna do something you've probably heard of, bicycling. We are gonna go for a bike ride. It seems really dumb to like explain this to you. Oh, you know, bike riding, it's a great form of cardio. That's something that most people know. But what most people don't realize is that unlike, you know, the lazy form of cardio I did doing my laundry, bike riding, you can really, really get a workout in in a uh, decent amount of time. Like I said, I don't have a lot of time right now, but I'm still gonna go on a bike ride because I know I'm gonna get a good amount of cardiovascular burn in the window that I'm giving myself. Many reasons I love bike riding. Obviously, easier on my ankles, easier on my knees. Be forewarned, you need to make sure that your bike is in the right position, your seat is raised. If you are too low for your frame, you're gonna put a lot of pressure on your knees. So I have my bike all set up the way I like it. Here's my bike right here, this gorgeous baby. I got my seat with my cushion pad. Um, I have a water bottle uh, rack. I also have like a little pouch that I'm gonna Velcro right there where I keep my phone, my headphones, everything like that. I love bike riding for the same reason that I like walking over running and that bike riding, I feel like I can stay in the zone a little easier while I'm putting in a decent amount of effort and I get my cardiovascular up. I don't need to be listening to specific music to get me going and keep me going. Bike riding is one of those things where I can easily do while I'm listening to a podcast. And also you see a lot, regardless of whether or not you're in the city or the country, whatever, bike riding is a good way to just see the world around you. It's exercise, 
combined with tourism basically. And while running can do the same, it can't cover as much ground in the amount of time. So it's very empowering to know I can take my bike and you know, take myself 20, 50 miles. I've done 50 miles in a day before. That's probably my max. And it's a great workout and I'm actually being efficient by getting from point A to point B. I also really like that in addition to getting in a good leg workout because yes, you are using your quads and the majority of your legs to push the bike forward without pounding on your joint. Also using your entire body to stabilize as opposed to like a reclining bike you'd find in a gym, which is pretty much isolates it in your legs. When you're using a real bike outside, you're using your entire body to stabilize the bike. So it's a full body workout, mostly in the legs, but you will feel it in your core and you will start to feel it in your arms holding on uh, that certain position for a while. Now that I'm out here, I'm not in a rush. And hopefully you can hear me over the sound of my tires grinding up gravel, but I just wanna talk about some of the reasons why, both from a fitness standpoint and from a purely subjective standpoint, why I would pick cycling over running most days. Honestly, really the only times I would pick running over cycling as if I wanted to do something with my dog because my dog cannot cycle, at least not yet. But maybe one day I'll get her one of those trailers and I'll pull her and that will be a hell of a workout when that happens. But for right now, I prefer cycling from a fitness standpoint because instead of just pounding your limbs against a hard surface repeatedly, oh man, you can really feel your, your muscles working when you're cycling because you're fighting against the resistance, right? You're pedaling against resistance to really propel yourself forward continuously and consistently. At no point are my feet really leaving the pedals. There's no shock. I'm using the muscles of my legs to propel myself forward. And in that way, I feel it's more similar to strength training than anything else. I mean, honestly, have you seen the quads on some of these professional cyclists? Huge, huge. Now, personally, I just think cycling is more enjoyable. You get to see more in a shorter period of time and the wind's just whipping in your face, cools you down. And, you know, you get to bring gear with you without it feeling like it's weighing you down on a running belt. It's easy to just strap a water bottle to your bike and go. And I mean, come on, there's a reason we rode bikes as kids and didn't go on jogs as kids. It's just plain fun. And as you can tell by my shortness of breath, it's not lacking in effort. And now you may disagree with me if you're an avid runner, which A, oh, hear those waterfalls? A, is entirely your right. And B, if that's the case, you're probably not watching this video. Okay. We're back to the uh, analysis portion of this segment and you will notice I did not do an analysis portion of the uh, laundry elliptical session and that's basically because the stats just aren't fun when you're standing still to be honest and also I forgot whatever not the point I did use my Garmin on this bike ride and there is specifically a bike setting which is fine you get to see all your stats let's go through it now keep in mind what we managed to achieve on the walk in the beginning of this video and let's see uh let's see how well we do shall we all right again we're gonna go into garmin connect here we are Highbridge cycling we did 35 minutes and 29 seconds so definitely less time than the walk but more effort holy crap look at this so 243 calories burned 6.74 miles like i said you get to travel a lot more and see a lot more on your bike than you do in the same time running so that's fun average speed 11.4 miles per hour you go faster which who doesn't love going fast that's fun so again 243 calories and like i said it burned around 200 in 20 minutes while running so this is pretty comparable and i didn't ruin my ankles so we love that Let's go into some of this fun stuff here. My average heart rate was 132. So significantly more cardiovascular work than the walk, which we averaged, you know, in the high 90s. I think it was around 100. My max heart rate was 170. Honestly, that's pretty much how high I go like when I'm playing rugby. So that's, that's intense. And the aerobic effect was 2.5. You maintained your cardio 
cardiorespiratory fitness for this activity. Cool, 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 cool. We love it. So, um, there's my pitch for cycling. Also, if you've seen from, uh, from our main vlog, and as you'll see from our upcoming travel vlog, I'm not guaranteeing that's gonna happen just because it's a week long, so I don't know how I'm gonna manage the timing on that, but biking is just also goes hand in hand with Greg and I's like adventuring kind of lifestyle. I love to strap him to the back of my car and take him wherever we go, discover new trails, so on and so forth. So I would absolutely recommend investing in a bicycle. They can be expensive, but if you're just looking for something like I use on a trail ride, my bike was around $550. You can go up to thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars for the highest of the high tech bikes that or for you know mountain biking or road biking or whatever. But if you're just looking to go on some trails, it's really not too much of an investment. And hot tip, used bikes are a really good resource, especially your local Facebook marketplace, that sort of thing. So check it out. As you can tell, um, filming a few days after this last segment, I'm paler and my hair is darker, which is pretty on brand for me. I'm also eating my lunch, which is also pretty on brand for me. The last form, of joint friendly cardio that I would like to talk about today. It's kind of a um, more of a general category and that's water sport. And that's, uh, I hate to use the term water sports because I'm pretty sure that's been like co-opted as a sexual term, but <laughs> it's true. Swimming, for example. As you'll see in this video, I include some footage from our vacation this week where we went paddle boarding, but being active in the water provides a great venue for exercising without putting stress on your joints. Swimming is famously a joint friendly cardio activity. When you're suspended in the water, the weight of your entire body isn't landing on your knees or your ankles or etc. So for this reason, you'll see a lot of, for example, seniors doing water aerobics or water related exercise classes because it's great for getting in that much needed cardiovascular fitness while still being kind to your body and your joints. While I didn't include swimming in this footage, like I said, I did go paddle boarding with Greg, my fiance, my soon to be brother-in-law and his girlfriend. And it was great because it was all upper body. Whether we were standing on the paddle board, which for me in my feet, and keeping my balance isn't really my strong point, so I really had to be conscious of my foot placement and um, you know, just the complications that club foot brings and how that affects my balance. So I had to be really conscious of my feet and engaging them. So I engaged my feet and my core, my entire body, keeping myself stable. It was a full body engagement, which was great. And then when that got too tiring, I would go on my knees, but it still provided a great upper body. And with the paddle that we were using, you're providing resistance against the water without you know, slamming on my elbows or my wrists. So it, it, it was also nice for a change to have a upper body concentrated cardio activity because most of my cardio activities are lower body, whether that's biking or elliptical or running or whatever. Your lower body pretty much carries your body when you're on land, right? But when you're in the water, you can really transfer most of that effort to your upper body, especially with paddleboarding and in swimming. So I'm going to pull up. It's been a few days since we did that paddleboarding. We have since returned home, um, so I'm gonna have to dig in my in my Connect app here. I did it as other in my app because there's no paddle boarding category. But as you can see here, I'm showing the map. We were in North Carolina, so we were in the intercoastal there. For an hour, we did 1.69 miles paddled with 140 calories. That doesn't sound like a lot, but keep in mind, this wasn't like exercise centric activity. We weren't really trying to get a huge workout in. You know, we're paddling a little bit and then stopping and chatting and hanging out and lounging on our boards. So if I did do an hour of consistent paddling, that would be a lot higher. So you can see here, average speed, average moving speed, max heart rate, 118 beats per minute. Average heart rate, 83 beats per minute. You know, for not moving my feet at all, I'd say that's pretty impressive. I know that doing water related activities isn't ideal for year round cardio. If you're not in an environment where it's warm and you can go swimming all year round, you might not have access to it unless you know you do have the option to go to a gym that has a pool. That might be a great option for you. I know a lot of people who do weightlifting in the gym and then take a quick shower and finish up their workout doing a few laps in the pool. 
and that's a great routine to have. However, if you don't have access to those options, just keep in mind that when summer rolls around, switch it up. Incorporate some cross training on a paddleboard or a kayak or just swimming in the ocean or in the lake. Anyway, that's all I got for you folks. This was a long video, I know. Um, I made it over the course of like several weeks, just like bits and pieces here and there, but I finally got it done. Obviously those aren't all the options out there for cardio if you're trying to be conscious of the shock you're putting on your joints and the impact that you're putting on your body as a whole. There's plenty of other options out there, but I just wanted to give you guys a couple ideas. If you have any cardio activities that you absolutely love that you think are joint friendly, send them my way because I'm constantly looking for cross training opportunities. You gotta switch it up all the time. Anyway, I hope this was useful for you guys, for both my clubbies and my non-clubbies out there. Joint health is super important. Take your fish oil, take your glucosamine or whatever, and just, just get out there. There's something for everyone. Anyway, I hope you guys have a great day. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe. I know that I'm a little sporadic with the videos, but the encouragement really means a lot. If you do want to check out what I spend most of my other time doing that keeps me away from YouTube, go to healthbycf.com, apply for nutrition or strength coaching if you're so inclined, and uh, have, have a great fall. It's September, so spook it up, baby, and uh, stay safe and party on. <laughs> oh, my love, my chunk. Hi, chunky. Oh, little chunky. Oh, little chunky.